I'll tell you, I was uh, I was surprised the way Maryland seemed to move the ball with with a lot of ease uh, down there, Bob. Look now at the Pittsburgh offensive backs with Jimmy Bailey, Stone, Collins, and Wallace, and come to the near sideline right now with Wallace. Look for Pitt to come out throwing the ball, possibly short slants to the receivers. We'll out see of what the eye, and Jimmy. Play action pass. No, gives it off on a beautiful delay right up the middle of the back. Man, the deep man. And they get it up to about the 36, 37 yard line. Pitt has worked on that play all week in practice. What they want the running backs to do with his wide tackle six defense, Bob, is cut back against the grain. This defense likes to pursue, likes to be aggressive, and this defense has a tendency also to over pursue. So cutting back against the grain would be most effective, and you saw Pitt do that. All right, it is now third down. Second down, rather, and about four to go. Single setback. And Jimmy coming to this side. And he chased, throws it away, intercepted. Now we're going to get intercepted out of bounds. And the near sack back in the 32-yard line by Tyrone Furman of Congemi. So uh, that'll be, uh, I think, an incomplete pass. And it'll be a great break for Pitt. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that, uh, that could have been, been an interception there. He just did just dump the ball off. You know, he should have drilled it right out of bounds if he was going to get rid of it. J.D. Gross was the linebacker who made that play. I think what happened was when he touched the ball, his foot was on the line. All right, so, there's now second, uh, rather third down and four. Now you take a look at the defensive line, and this is a quick one for the Maryland Turks. They lead 3-0 here in the first period of play. Out of the eye, can Jimmy back to the 30. Throws on a slant across complete up near the 50-yard line as he fired it up very nicely to Clint Wilson and Brian Becker, the outside linebacker, and sometimes strong safety, they switch on him, was the man that came up to make the stop. They spot the ball, it'll be a first down for the Panthers of Pitt, who trail nothing to three in the first period of play. When Pitt goes to the air, you can look for them to do that. The short routes, 10, 15 yards, trying to hit the wide receiver quick so Kajemi can get rid of the ball before that wide tackle six, maybe an eight-man front can get on him. Dwight Collins has come to the near sideline out of the eye. And Jimmy up back gets the ball straight ahead. Uh, there's Bailey. Wilson's in there, an inside linebacker on the stop. And the ball across the 50. The officials are calling for their timeout. There's an injury down on the field. The Maryland player is down. And unfortunately, holding on to his knee, that is Mark Bailey, the man who just. Uh, Marlon McIntyre, who you see there on your screen behind the coaching staff of Pitt, has a pulled calf muscle, and he is normally a starter for the Panthers, but came up lame in practice this week along with the other starter and halfback, Joe McCall. So that's why you see Darnell Stone and Mark Bailey. Today. There's a timeout on the field. Maryland 3, Pitt nothing. A freshman. They're not very deep in their offensive line or defensive line. Now out of the eye, can Jimmy. His up back is Bailey. Fakes the flip across the side, being harassed, now fires upfield and out of bounds. That's a good play for a quarterback who's starting in only his second game. Everybody was covered, Jimmy threw it away. That shows what type of quarterback this kid is. Yeah, he, yeah, he showed a lot of points on that tab. I think, I think that's going to be the, the key for the pit offense this year, is, is just how quickly he does mature. He should look mature there. All right, now it's third down and six. This is an obvious passing down for Maryland. Sometimes they'll come in and they'll throw an eight-man front up there, then they'll throw in five backs and go the other way. So let's see how they're going with it. Boy, they're uptight in the passing situation out of the eye. And Jimmy, third down, six. Maryland leads 3 nothing first period. Right over the middle, he goes for all of it. Can't quite get it. He had his man down here. Oh, Dwight Collins. Six feet, one, two hundred and ten pounds. The planker back had come out of there and was wheeling down. He just barely overthrew him. Collins had a step and a half on Lendl Jones. You're going to watch the play right here because Jimmy drops straight back. Looking downfield, now he changes up and sees Collins coming open long. Here's Collins. He's got a step on Jones right off his fingertips. An incomplete. Pitt will have to punt. All right, we've got Cross as a single man back deep for Maryland. High snap, Recchia drills one. Far corner, and it'll bounce into the end zone for a touchback. Boy, he gave it a whale of a shot trying to hit that far corner. That was some punt by Tony Recchia. Did you notice the uh, Maryland man, Bob, faked the reception? I thought he was getting the ball. Yeah. 
Well, they were smart of what he did. Joe Krause had put him in. Maryland will have a lot of different types of players in here today than what they had, because as you said earlier, Froggy Morris, West Virginia just did a number on them physically. I tell you, they look pretty strong coming out here today so far, Bob. That they do. Now, Frank Reich is in quarterback again, out of the eye this time. Maryland in motion to the near sideline, turning back the other way, Greg Hill. And on an inside hand, the number one to that Goes across the center up to about the 22, 23, and three on the spot. Dave Daddio is Maryland's power runner. He runs like a bull. Of course, he's big, and as we said, he's very, very strong. Well, they're running it too. Uh, Wayne Blakowski, Hilk, and Moss. Maryland, incidentally, had a little bit of an advantage coming into this game because the pit defense runs a 5-2, much like West Virginia did last week. Wide receiver Sean Sullivan comes to the near sideline with an ending slot. And they smothered that quarterback back on him. They put a Wing Lukoski put a rush on him. He was looking through nothing but arms and legs. Now Wing Lukoski was all over the quarterback, Frank Wright. Bob Pitt, incidentally, has not lost a regular season game after having a week off since 1977. And, of course, they had last week off after thoroughly beating Temple 35 to nothing the week before. All you got to worry about there is hidden vigorous. Coming to the near sideline is Greg Hill. Out of the eye. Right now sets him into a pro set from the 21-yard line. Moving all kinds of right. They've got a flag down in the backfield as they come to the 20 to 25 to 30. And he's going to be belted out of bounds after a good run up there by the fullback Dave Daddio. And the only thing is there was a marker on the play. We'll see what they're going to call. Melvin Dean was in on the stop. However, it may be coming back. Willie Joyner made some block on that. He took out two of the pit, two of the pit defenders on that play. In one block. We're going to get a backfield in motion call here. It big scene. What they did, they went out of the eye, shifted into the pro set set their man in motion to the right Davis, then brought him back in, and on that back in, unless if he moved forward just a tad coming up the line, that put the uh, illegal motion. I think that was the right call, Bob. Maryland has been pretty successful with something they call the, the option screen, and that's what they're looking at. Reich, the quarterback, has an option of going to the screen if he doesn't have a receiver open downfield, you'll see a lot of that today. Sean Sullivan comes to the near sideline on third down 12. Seven minutes to go, first period of play. Maryland leading 3-0. On their second possession, an inside handoff to Willie Joyner. The medical line of scrimmage and cracked down hard. They're going to have to kick it away as Moss and Sapio are stopping. Billy Moss at 6'4", 265. Sapio, 6'1", 215. The right tackle right end. Shilkin in the middle guard at 6'1", 230. Rob Biskowski and company and Lorenzo Freeman, they're huge. There's no question about that. All right, Tommy Flynn is the single safety. Standing back to punt now from the five. Just does get it away. They don't run any good hang time on the punt. Flynn is going to have to let it bounce. It takes a pit bounce. And Flynn is wise. Runs away from that ball and allows Maryland to down it in their own territory. Pitt will have great field position when uh, they take over on the Maryland 40. Let's see where they're going to put it. 46-yard line. There's a timeout with the score. Maryland three, pit nothing. Italian salami, pepperoni, mellow All right, now, uh, out of the eye, as you see, Congemi is up back. Bailey, over the middle, he wants it all. Fight for it, down on the four-yard line. Good coverage, White Collins trying to get it. Lendell Jones, the little five foot ten left halfback, stayed right with him step for step. Lendell Jones knew that one was coming all along and had a step, in fact, in front of Dwight Collins on that play. And here's, the t here's a look at the replay. Kajemi going back. He knew he wanted to go to Collins. First play off initially. Didn't waste any time. Went down the sideline. Great play by Jones. Good coverage. Back to live action. Maryland leading 3 0. Pitt, second town. Now coming up, they've sent Matt Stennett in there. The uh, freshman, he's in the slot. To the left. All right, and it's right up the middle they go. Driving, trying to go, and they don't get too far with Marlon McIntyre, who's in his fullback. It looks like Close Fazio is going to throw in some set 
fresh backs and everything, trying to do a lot of working around on a Maryland ball club. Well, that, you know, Bob, that Matt Stanner was very highly recruited uh, uh, quarterback uh, from the Pittsburgh area, but he's got some speed. And uh, that, they may try and go deep. They look like they want to throw deep quite a bit today. Bailey and Collins have come in now, and they send Collins far to the left. Foles will use his running back and wide receivers as uh, the play centers. They'll be bringing in the plays from the sidelines. From the eye, Congemi. Almost caught on the 35 yard line, running out of the arm for the intended receiver. Clint Wilson, Joe Krause, the safety, covering on the play, and the Panthers will be forced to punt it away. That's the replay. Here's Kajemi dropping straight back. He's looking into the area he wants to throw, and there's Wilson. It goes off his fingertips. It looked as if he almost left his feet before he had to. And off his fingertips, Reggie in the punt. All right, he'll have a favoring uh, win. Should boom it all the way through, and uh, it'll be a touchback. Second time now that he's punted that ball through there. Well, Maryland will have its third possession, and they lean in the ball game, three nothing on a field goal of 49 yards. With uh, 529 remaining in the first period of play. Boomer Esiason, it looks like he's able to play, but they're not going to do anything about it unless it gets desperate. He's injured on the right shoulder, although he's a left hand passer. So Frank Wright, the junior, an honor student, by the way, from Maryland is in there on a pro set. Now gives off to the back going far to the right. That is uh, Adonic. He's only 5'9", uh, 206 pounds, and he picks up maybe a half yard on the field. Don't let his size fool you. He's 5'9", but as I said, both he and Daddio can bench press over 400 pounds. The running backs are extremely strong, but Danik has very deceptive speed. He hits the hole probably quicker than any of the Maryland running backs. He's their big play man. Well, he can bench press more than the man that was here before him that had the record until he left. His name is Randy White. Dallas Cowboys. He must be all right. There's a timeout down on the field of play here for a moment. Let's see. We got second down and ten, and we have an illegal procedure going against Maryland. Well, that'll drop him back five unless Pitt refuses the ball or wants the down. Let's see what they're going to do. They'll take the five. Incidentally, Bob Pitt has won eight of their last nine games on natural turf, and that, of course, is what they're playing on here today in Burns Stadium. You have to worry about the hidden vigorous. What's so hidden about it, Bob? Well, you know, vigorous is vigorous. You've been there. <laughs> vigorous is vigorous. It's true. All right, out of the eye now. With a second down 15. Oh, come on the side on a reverse with a magnificent play to Russ Davis. And he's knocked out of bounds around the 20 yard line. Coming up to nail him, Troy Hill. On that left quarterback came far across the field, following his man on that reverse. Russell Davis. Another flag down, Bob. Yep. Mark here's the here's a view. Right rolling right, and hands off, running left. And this is Davis. Davis is a wide receiver, but he's built more like a tight end. He can run the football. He can catch the football. He's like a Kellen Winslow, if you will. 6'4 and 220 pounds. Russell Davis. Troy Benson. And then to do a little work. And now, this is Benson Troy against his brother Sean, which is a story we're going to develop as a uh, illegal, illegal block in Maryland, Bob. Well, let's see what they're going to do here. And that's got to put them deep in the hole. And with the wind the way it is, at 4.30 or more to go, Pitt has to end up with this thing with good field position, provided they're able to hold the Turks without making the first down. It'll now be second down 18, and the ball placed on the 12. Usually in a situation like this, when you're running a reverse, it's an illegal crackback. I think that's what that was. Greg Hill has gone far to the right out of the throw set, now switching into the eye. The up back being Daddy O. And they give it to the deep man, and he is first caught from behind. But Janet, and is he knocked off by Al Wenglikowski, who absolutely smothered him? All everything, Al Wenglikowski. Well, he looked to take his head off there, Bob. Here's Reich. He take the handoff there to the first man and hit Podetic. Wenglikowski playing the strong side is what you might call a flop in, just wraps Podetic up and brings him down. Good tackle. 
And we coined that phrase, all of us on the way over, a flop end, because you can see him go either right end or left end. So we refer to him as a flop end, and we may get a real tough penalty here at 15 yards, and where do you see the line? It's going to be a face mask. And that is a big break for the Maryland Turks in this particular situation because the Panthers of Pitt had them very deep in their own territory with a lot of yards to gain against the winner. Bob, I think he, they called that one on Wendlikowski. I mean, the tackle, he might have gotten the face mask, although I think in the college it's, it's 15 yards, and, and obviously that, that wasn't a deliberately, deliberately done act, I don't think. No, it was. Now it's second down and four yards to go, and the wind is swirling and kicking around, and out of the eye they come. Sending the man straight down the field on a fly pattern to pass away from him, and there's a marker on the play. Down at about the 38 yard line is Troy Benson, the linebacker, comes up to meet Russ Davis, who caught the pass. Let's wait and see what they're going to call here. They may have gotten Davis on a push off. Let's wait and see. Yes, they did. It looks as if it's against Maryland. I think Davis went out, pushed off on the defensive back, and cut it inside. Talking things over here, the officials. This is something that killed Maryland last week when they played. West Virginia, key penalties, mistakes, killed them. That's why they lost that football game. The referee is Robert Cooper, the umpire, Carl Crowley, the head linesman, Charles Needy, the line judge, Paul Tig, the field judge, William Looper, and back judge is Charles Phillips. So you got them from the American, or the Atlantic Coast Conference, and some of the couple three from the Central uh, Intercollegiate Association. All right, now let's see how they mark it off and get it all on him. So here we've had a penalty go against Pitt for long yardage. Now it turns and goes the other way. So that Maryland is uh, several plays away from where they want to be. The ball will be on the 21 yard line. Greg Hill has come in along with uh, Rogers. They called it on Davis, pushing off offensive pass interference. Second down, and it'll be nine yards to go. Now they bring Greg Hill to the near sideline. Time is called. The headlineman has whistled in something. Officials are trying to get their signals together. Uh, they had the down. They didn't have the down mark properly. That's why they why they held that held up. And now we have a second down and uh, nine yards to go. And they'll go to the pro set and they'll bring Greg Hill to the near sideline again. Now they'll split Russ Davis far to the right and go to the eye. Roll out. Across the pattern intercepted by Flynn on the 32 yard line. Intended for Greg Hill, Flynn stepped up inside the pass, right coming to the near sideline, threw across the body, and made the mistake of throwing it right into the arms of Flynn. Here's a look at the replay, a rollout pass, Boomer Esiason runs this so well, this is Rake, his backup, he sees a red shirt down there, but he underthrows the ball, Flynn had perfect coverage in front of Hill. Makes the reception, a man for all plays, Tommy Flynn. All right, That's, and uh, Jenny has come in. His fullback is Bailey. All right, here's number 46, having to get wrapped up by Tom McGill, and he get blasted, Darnell Stone. Now, you might have heard something in your uh, receiver down on the field of play, the field judge or the umpire. One of the officials is telling somebody on the Maryland side, I'm not going to do something to you, whatever it was, but we picked it up very easily. That's, That's a, the miracle of electronics up here, Bob. Yeah, second down, 13, a loss of three. Three nothing Maryland, first period of play, 3 4 to go. Now that... Wide tackle six, and this time on the delay to Marlon McIntyre, and he cracks down to about the 30, across the 30, maybe to the 29, before Eric Wilson, the inside linebacker, grabs him. Those two plays show you what Pitt is trying to do and what Maryland is trying to do. That wide tackle six defense gives the Maryland side a lot of penetration on the offensive line of Pitt, which is one of the best in the country. Then on the second play, they broke the long run. Pitt is trying to cut back against the over-pursuit of that wide tackle six, and it worked with uh, McIntyre on that play. All right, now they uh, put a man in the slot, and that gentleman happens to just be Dwight Collins. And Jenny, a lot of time, sets up, and it's complete to Collins on the 20. And a big number 55 along with Hoffman, 27, come around to wrap him up. Wilson and Huffman. Here's Kajemi. He's going to roll out, come towards your screen. He's watching Collins all the way. Collins cuts it back toward 
the quarterback, Kajemi, makes the play, and he's shoved out of bounds. All right, it'll be pitch ball, first down, 10 yards to go. Maryland leading 3 0. Two minutes to go in the first period of play. Dwight Collins switch to the left. All American candidate from Beaver Falls, Dwight Collins. Billy Wallace to the near sideline, out of the eye. Kajemi gives it to his deep back, and that coming straight down the slot. Goes Darnell Stone, and he cuts for good yardage before Pete Cook and uh, Kevin Donis. Donis, by the way, is out of North Hill. Uh, he's a sophomore. He'll be shocked, of course, to know about his number one ranked team in the United States high school wise, having been defeated by Butler High School in a ball game not too long ago. Now looking, they're down inside the 15, down to the 13. Looking from behind the Maryland defense there, you'll see 91, Tom Parker. He's a freshman. That kid will be one of the best defensive linemen in the country when he matures. There's a timeout call down on the field of play by the Pitt Panthers. If they want to talk things over, that'll be the first timeout. Froggy, have you seen anything that's developing this game as Congeny goes off the sideline to talk it over with his coach? Uh, well, he's, he's over there with Andy and, and Foge right now. I think what, what's happening is that uh, Pitt is just getting their, their offense uh, balanced tab, and uh, I think that uh, they're probably putting in for at least three here. Well, Jeremy so far today is two for seven, 22 yards, and they want him to be a little bit more effective against the Maryland defense than that, and it's, uh, it's a matter of getting comfortable, I would think, in getting both the running attack working and the slant ends, the quick pass is working also. I think I think you're right. We're going to see a few more screens and, and some uh, a little dumps off to the back I, backs, I think. Maryland, in the meantime, with that wide tackle six, only runs three defensive backs. But in sure passing situations, they'll bring in an extra man as a defensive back. And what they'll do is they'll drop one of their linebackers back, and it'll be uh, Baker. will play uh, strong safety, who's strong safety size, even though he plays... Linebacker. You saw Jimmy talking here with Andy Urbanic, who was a football coach at a high school in Pittsburgh called Penn Hills. And he had Bill Freddy. When Freddy came to Pitt, Urbanic was not far behind. He sure was, and I'll tell you, Penn Hills' loss was Pitt's game. All right, here's Dwight Collins moving far to the left now, out of the eye. And Jimmy. And uh, Bailey. The deep man Stone. A slap pass right over the corner to Dwight Collins inside the five. Pretty tough to defend against that one, Bob. There's the quick slants that I that I was telling you beforehand that Pitt will try to work against Maryland. Can Jimmy will drop back three steps? Watch him. Count the steps. Here we go. One, two, three. Boom. The ball's gone. Collins will just come up, cut it in, pick off the pass, and now they're sitting pretty on the floor. They have to be careful of one thing there, and that's the flanker coming across on a pick. That's awful close to a first down goal. You gotta be awfully careful about that. Now, pitch back to Stone going far to the right and knocked out of bounds. Donald Stone inside the three yard line. Conjemi on a pitch to Darnell. Darnell had knocked him out as Eric Wilson, the inside linebacker. So it's three to nothing with 44 seconds left to go. The clock stopped, of course, on the out of bounds play. Maryland has the three as McIntyre goes up and Bailey comes in at fullback. And Jimmy has picked up the play from the bench. Good play by Eric Williams, who pursued the ball perfectly. Maryland's linebackers, both Williams and uh, and the Paul, extremely quick, fast. Second down, goal to go on the three. To the fullback, no, pitch shot missed on the pass. Beautiful fake on the fake to the fullback. Bailey took it out of there. Baldwin covered on the play. Boy, was that some play, and the pit man is down for whom that pass was intended. Might have been winded. Beautiful fake that time by Congeny. That ball was there, was simply dropped by Darnell Stone. He's shaking up down there. Yep. Oh, it was a magnificent play. Uh, it faked, I guarantee you one thing, it faked me, because I thought that the fullback was going right in with a touchdown, and Maryland converged on him. Luckily for Maryland, their man Wilson went over to cover on the play, and I think that uh, we'll find Arnell Stone just had the win knocked out of him. Well, as you all know, Bob, the college game is becoming more and more like the professional game. We're seeing a lot of play-action passes, seeing a lot of long passes, and with these quarterbacks here today, Jimmy, even though Boomer Esiason isn't playing, as, as I mentioned, the, the kid in there for him, Wright, Frank Wright, starting in his first game, Still can throw the ball, and at 6'4", 205, he can also roll with it and run with it. You know, I'd like to know one thing, Bob. How, how could you get faked on that play? 
How could I? Were you really fake down on that one? Yes, I surely was. Did you, did you think that... Uh, I wasn't sure who had the ball. Well, that's what fooled me. I thought for a moment that Bailey had it. Now we're taking Stone out. But he went out on his own power. Yeah. And he ran out and out from a wing. And a keep by Conjemi and a mark around the play for an illegal procedure, I would believe. And now this could be a refusal of penalty here. Let's wait and see what they do. It was an illegal procedure on the part of Pittsburgh with a marker being dropped. Well, so they, Jimmy kept it on a busted play. They got Matt Stennett, who was lined up as a third running back in that play. Stennett, normally a wide receiver, number 24, moved before the snap. And that was the, the call right there by the linesman who signaled offensive motion in the backfield. Here we go. Now watch Stennett. He's on the very end of your screen. You might be able to see him move in the backfield. Look who also like the up man, the line back of the, on the line moved like they were going to trap left. When he started his move, there's the possibility there. They called the illegal procedure to climb. And now with the uh, fourth down, the Panthers will try to tie it up. I think Foge is going to go for it. You do? Yep. Well, it's fourth down and three. And you may see a timeout used here. Here comes the play. Clock is running. They've got 20 seconds to get the ball snapped. You better hurry it up and call a timeout. 14 seconds. They're going to go on Jimmy with six seconds. Over the top, touchdown. Mark Bailey diving straight over. I'll tell you what, that uh, can Jimmy showed me something there. Getting that play off in 18 seconds, that was something. He, he was a little confused, and he just went right into the huddle, called to play, six points. Well, let's credit the Pitt offensive line who moved that strong defensive line of Maryland back one yard, and that was enough. All right, now it'll be Schubert trying for the extra point with Congeny holding, and Pitt has jumped in top six to three with uh, 14 seconds to go. Up to goes and through, and the Panthers are on top by the score of seven to three with 14 seconds remaining in the first period of play. I'll tell you, Bob, that, uh, that pit drive was aided, of course, by the interception and, and, the, that, and the penalties there didn't, didn't seem to help matters either. Oh, they were moving around a little bit as now Schubert will be doing the booting. And we'll pick up your return man here in a moment. There's that touchdown as he died right over the top. He went right over Bill Frelick, who moved the linebacker and the defensive lineman a yard off the ball. That's that's going with power right there. You go right over your big guy, Bill Frelick, who can play in the professionals right now. All right, now the deep man is Bajanic Barr, Blunt in the center, and Vernon Carter on the inside. Nine plays, 32 yards. Took three minutes and 23 uh, seconds time of possession. Uh, normally, the deep man here, Al Blunt, is going to turn and watch the ball go into the tuba down there <laughs> I'll at tell the far you, end. I'll tell you, that, uh, that Bill Fraley, he, he could not even move that defensive tackle out of the way. He mm. could move the building if he right, wanted. He certainly could. He's just a puck, but he still has an ear or so to go. Yep, another, another season. I'll tell you, it was really funny. A lot of you folks looking in around the country and hearing everything. Bill Felix's mother uh, works at Oakmont Country Club, one of the fabled country clubs in the world, and if you had never seen so many guys that didn't know how to play golf and how to coach football, showed up and asked for a bowl of soup. <laughs> Were there a lot of football coaches up there at Oakmont? Right? Didn't they, though? Well, they had them. All right. Hubert's boot. Going back, and they're going to no, they're not going to run it out. It looked like Blunt wanted to, and all of a sudden he decided, no, I think I better... Change horses. Yeah, he right. looked a little upset about that. Yeah. He was signaling not to come yeah. out, and he looked a little, little hesitant. Yeah, he wanted, he wanted to run with to go. Yeah. He sure did. I thought he wanted to run. He felt he could get at least 10 or 15, but I think Bobby Ross or somebody down there on the sideline said, there's some guys coming you're not aware of. <laughs> Drop anchor. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> and he did. Okay. Now, let's see what Frank Wright can do. First down, 10. Rolling near side. Puts it up. Cock. Up there by Russ Davis, the wide receiver, as Melvin Dean comes over. A couple of Pittsburgh players were, who may not be getting as many calls when they may have had bad ankles or calves this past week. Missed a couple of practices today. That's, that's true, Bob, especially in the running backs. We had McIntyre out and, uh, and also uh, one other guy, and 
that play right there. I really like that wide receiver, Russell Davis. Big guy, strong guy, runs real well. All right, they flap their ends on a pro set, Frank Wright, with a second down three, pitching it back and is stripped up. At Gladio, who is their uh, fullback, senior at 226. You know, Ted, you're right about that Russ Davis. On this last play, he really blocked down great on the end, on the, on the pit defensive end. That's the end of the quarter. That's the end of the quarter. Pittsburgh 7 and Maryland 3. We'll be back right after this. Loss of bladder control can be a problem for men over 60, but it can be cured without drugs or surgery. If you're a veteran over 60 with bladder control problems, the Veterans Administration is a free home program for you. A nurse will visit your home, help find the cause of the problem, and work out a treatment plan with you. Call the nurse at 683-3000 or write the VA Medical Center in Pittsburgh. We can help you get a new lease on life. Pittsburgh needs to rock. It listens to WDVE 102 FM. They bring Greg Hill to the near sideline. 7 3 at the start of the second quarter. Pitt has the seven. Give it to the deep man coming through. That's Bonadick. Rick Badonic. The sophomore running back. Incidentally, Pitt now has not given up a touchdown this year and has allowed only three in its last 25 quarters of play. Uh, they're going to have to bring in their punter now, Al Sadler, Al Sadler. He's the biggest man I've seen, six foot five. That's a big man for a punter. Boy, he sure is, Bob. Tom Flynn, as usual, single safety. Got a lot of leverage in that leg. With the wind at his back, it's a beauty. Nice kick. Sends Flynn back inside the 30 to the 28. And gets across the 30 to about the 32 or 3 yard line. And we'll see where they spike. Sadler, the punter, is a big guy. He's, he's big for a punter. Most punters only go 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, Sadler is 6'5", 213. And he was drafted, Bob, this summer by the Milwaukee Brewers to play baseball. He's a pitcher. They could have used him this year. <laughs> We want to remind you, the announcers on this telecast are contracted and paid for by Total Communication Systems and any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of the accounts of this game would have to express written consent of the Total Communication System is prohibited. That was a 44-yard punt, isn't it? Out of the eye, can Jimmy giving it off to Darnell Stone across the 35 and hit it over the 36 by Greg Thompson and Tom McHale. I tell you, Jimmy made a nice fake on that play. Unfortunately, he didn't seem to fake much of the uh, Maryland left side of their line out. Now you see, as uh, uh, Jimmy's in there, McIntyre and Bailey have been switching back and forth. McIntyre had a bruised calf, didn't practice an awful lot. So has Joe McCall. McCall. All right, now come to the near sideline with Dwight Collins. Set the team up in the eye. 7 3 Pittsburgh, second quarter. Jimmy. Inside handoff to McIntyre, the fullback, right up the middle as Greg Thompson meets him there. McIntyre cracks across the 40, and if the ground game can keep going with the physical condition of Pitt and the two weeks rest and uh, Maryland's physical condition and a bad beating physical from West Virginia, that ground game in the long run should pay off for the Panthers. Well, it just uh, blew him right out on that play. The best thing the Panthers can do offensively is keep Maryland's defense off balance, and I think they're doing that right now. They're down one on the 42-yard line. Out of the eye, Congemi to the back, and Arnell Stone. He's awfully close to a first down, and we'll wait and see. The officials are blowing the ball dead until they get a good look at it. But here it looks like he has the first down. And Al Covington and Cock were the players that got in on that stop. It's going to be awfully close. 
There was a the signal first down. Coach Mazio was over on the far sideline eyeing that one up himself, and I'm not sure he was sure. <laughs> we are ahead of the Stan Ernst and Jeff Skinner helping us here in the booth. Young men from Maryland. All right, to the right side now we have uh, a little slot formation with the uh, first and ten congenital. To the right man going outside there and bang. So Darnell Stone got a couple of yards on the play before J.D. Gross was able to get him. Maryland was covering very well deep on that play, Bob, and, and I think maybe that was a safety valve pass. Could well have been. I wanted to say that Collins was cutting across on a post pattern, and Dwight was uh, wide open for a moment or two, and Kinjemi looked his way. Here's Kinjemi dropping back. He's looking for Collins coming across on the post, but then decides, decides to take the safety valve in stone, and that's good for about five yards. Back to live action. Kinjemi. Looked like he was trying to get a play action pass in a way and instead handed it off forward to really to Mark Bailey as fullback before Lindale Jones, the left hat back, comes up to Mike him out of bounds and we'll see where they spot the ball. Looks like it's going to be on about the 46 of Maryland and another first down. It's rolling now. You know that to have that, uh, that particular play set in the last play almost has the look of an option the way they run it, doesn't it? It does, although you won't see Pitt per se run the option because the Maryland defense and the wide tackle six in particular, it's awful difficult to run an option against it. They want to reposition the football. The ball is right on the 46-yard line of Maryland. 7-3 Pitts, second period of play with 11.44 to go. I think the win's a factor here today, Ryan. Very possible. In the meanwhile, come to the near sideline now. And with the... Uh, with him, Billy Wallace. And Jenny throws it right out to Wallace. He does a little dance, gets across the 40, and then is really hammered inside the 40 by Clarence Baldwin, the right halfback that came up. Well, there was a lot of red shirts around that one, wasn't there, Bob? Yes, there were, and indeed, a lot of the Maryland players have been red shirted, too. Some of them are five year seniors. Well, they've had a lot of injuries in the past. I'm not trying to pun, but it's second it down in about two. Then incidentally is working that quick drive, quick pass, extremely well against this Maryland defense so far. And Jimmy worked this time out of the eye. Pitt doesn't use any motion. If they do, it'll be very seldom. There he goes to his deep man. That's Darnell Stone. Darnell with some great running gets a first down across the 30, down to about the 27 before. Eric Wilson come in to make the stop. Well, old Darnell was directing his blockers into traffic and directing the tackler there for a second. We're going to get another look at that. Here's the counter play. They fake it to the right, and then Stone takes off left behind the block of number 72, Tony Brown. Brown was leading the way, and an excellent job. He's a young sophomore from Stanford, Connecticut. He's got a great career in front of him. All right, now we have come to the near sideline with Billy Wallace and Jimmy on the keeper of the option play and runs it across the 25. That time could have pitched it out, kept it instead, and went on in for some good yardage before again. Eric Wilson is able to come up and make the stop, and it. once again, the Panthers are moving. 7-3 the score, and the ball is on the 23-24 yard line. Not only are they moving, but they're eating up a lot of the clock on this drive. 10 minutes, a little over 10 minutes left in the first half. Bill Wallace goes far. Comes to the near sideline with Matt Stunner. Out of the eye, Congeny. Drops the ball. Big scramble. Looks like uh, it has been recovered by Merrill. Clarence Baldwin looks like he's the man to get up off the ball as Congeny just dropped it coming out of the snap. Well, that stops a big drive, and the Maryland Turks take over on their own 25. Here's the play. It was a drop from center. Bailey tried to get his hands on it, couldn't do it. And the man, I think, that came up with the, with the, with the ball was Scott Shankwater. All right, now it is Frank Reich. So here is off to that uh, joiner, the running back, and he is smothered. That looked to me like it might have been a busted play, Bob. Whatever it was, it wasn't going anywhere, partner. Down the 25-yard line, it'll be second down, and a long 10, maybe a half 11. How's that? Maryland needs a drive. They want to 
move the ball down the field. They did well in their first position. And it's about time, I think, they can't let Pitt's defense start getting control. They've got to take control themselves. They put in motion now of Davis. Right, trying to find somebody to throw to. Let you fly up here to this top. On the 45 yard line by Rogers. Rogers across the 50 and down to the Panther 42 yard line. Coach Bobby Ross told me that the big thing about Frank Wright is that he's so similar to Boomer Esiason. Both these quarterbacks are great at ad living. Here he is on the move, he's avoiding the rush. The receiver downfield opens up, comes free behind the pit secondary, and he's wide open. Now Bill they, Rogers, a tight end. Rogers did a great job of getting himself open on that play. Now they bring Russell Davis to the near sideline, working out of the eye. And their up back is Daddy or the fullback. Bobble on the pan back, but they give it off to Joyner. Joyner packs for good yardage across the 40, finds the scene before Bob Shilkin is able to come in and bring him down the middle goal. As the ball is placed down on the 36-yard line of Pitt, the score, Panthers 7, Maryland 3, and the Panthers now find their backs to the wall as Maryland's got new life on a fumble recovery, and they're driving. Now, what did I tell you? Maryland's got to get control offensively. However, they did it on a busted play, avoiding a rush, but nevertheless, they've got the momentum. They're moving the football. Out of the eye formation, Daddy O the up back. Turn in motion now. Very quickly, Russ Davis. Turn around, firing toward Davis. It's out to the far side. Almost deflected there. A big number 94 coming in. Tom Quince, along with Al Wing Lukowski. That was just intended for Sean Sullivan. That was just a bad pass on Reich's part. We had to get it rid of it. He too was trying to spin it around. I thought he was going to throw himself into the ground. <laughs> He didn't even, really, he didn't even take a look. It's supposed to work a quick pass. He's got two receivers out there in the flat, and he just threw it between them and overthrew it. All right, coming to the near sideline now is Russ Davis going far. Is the left is Greg Hill. They switch from the eye out of the pro set, and then they flop their end of Bill Rogers to the left side. Big rush, and it's tipping up. And now Wayne Lukowski knocks him flat back on about the 47-yard line. Wayne Lukowski on a blitzing drive takes right to the ground. Billy Callahan on a blitz from the safety position. Let's see if we can pick him up coming in. Watch for number 31, Billy Callahan. Wing Lukowski chases him, grabs him by the feet. Callahan falls on top of him and maybe picks up an assist there. But that, was, uh, that was one of those lookout blocks from number 66. He was hollering, look out That's to Frank. Right. Here's uh, Al Sadler in the punt. We have Flynn back. With the wind at his back, he bangs one. Flynn takes it on the 12, goes to the far side. Mm -hmm. Boom, down he goes on the 14 and a brilliant play by the Maryland Turks. Great punt coverage by Maryland oh, yeah. as Joe Berkovich out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he played his football at Elizabeth Forward High. Well, there's a timeout in the action. Pitt 7, Maryland 3. I'll tell you what, he almost did turn that up. He gets around it. Sports Entertainment presents Sports Journal. And Jimmy hands off quickly. The running back picks up about three yards on the play. Happens to be Mark Bailey. So we got her here with a seven to three ball game and a lot of action going on here. There was a couple of plays back there a while where the penalties kept the ball right about where you see it here. And then all of a sudden Pitt moved and finally got field goal out of it. Then they came on to do what they've done. So here we go. Maryland got a field goal out of it. Now it's seven to three. Now here is a playoff pass out to Dwight Collins. He gets across the 20. And uh, gets a couple of yards on the play before Bruce Messner makes him a freshman. Well, there's a big drop off. A lot of seniors up front and a lot of freshmen and sophomores in the secondary. And a lot of those seniors on defense, on the defensive line, especially for Maryland, did not start until this year. So there was a lot of inexperience on that defense running the wide tackle six. Mark Bailey has come in now at fullback. And uh, the Panthers send Bill Wallace far right. Congemi gives it on a strip to Donnell Stone, and he is wrapped up just short of the 25. And the Maryland Turks are on fire down there, Froggy. Well, they sure are. They're hitting on you there. 
That, that line play is getting fierce down there, Bob. This Claren watch Clarence Baldwin come up from his right halfback spot. Look at his line play in there, Bob. They're banging yeah. into each other, those big ones down there. That's there. what they do with a six-man. Really, they can stack an eight-man front with a wide tackle six, so anything goes. All right, they're going to call time for the measurement here. The ball is just shy of the 25, the nose of the ball. Well, we'll see uh, what it's going to be here. It's a first down, and that is a very, very big first down. Key play there with the wind. The wind is, is blowing dead against Pitt right now. They need to move the ball down the field. Mylon McIntyre has come in now. You're seeing a lot of uh, shuffling around in the backfield spot. Now they're going to send Bill Wallace far to the right. They put Dwight Collins as a slot back. Out of the eye, they come with Congemi. To the deep back, bang, Donald Stone meets a stone wall. I knew I was going to say that before the day was over. It was Eric Wilson, the linebacker, comes in and nail it. Well, he, he made a, a good hit on number 55, Wilson, and will bounce off Wilson with the second man guy. Five minutes and 43 seconds left in the second period of play. The Panthers seven, Maryland three, in a very hard fought ball game. As Bailey comes back into the ball game, Dwight Collins goes far to the right. They bring uh, Bill Wallace as a split into the near side. Single setback now. Jimmy pumps once, fires deep, pumps it off, and not quite. Just barely overthrew Dwight Collins, far down on the Maryland 40-yard line. That was a long, long pass. Coaches don't like to see receivers stick one hand out and try to make catches. I think if Dwight dove for it with both hands extended, he might have had it. We might get a chance to take a look at it on replay here. It almost Chris looked Collins. to me like he, like, oh, here we're going to see it. It almost looked to me like he slowed up. He stuck the one hand out. You don't like to, coaches will tell you, you better be sure you catch the ball if you try to catch it with one hand. They don't well, like to see I, that. I have to, in his own defense, though, think that he had to go that way because it's about the only way he could try to catch it. Oh, that's a big snap. His knee was not down, they claim. Uh, the referee is pointing at something. I don't know whether he was sacked or not. But he apparently waved it off, and he looked very closely as to see whether Kajemi uh, was nailed down. He wanted to throw that ball up to Pat Chapani. We're going to call for the punt. Here, we get a good look at it. He just ducks under. His knee touches the ground right there, and I think the referee missed a call on that. Kajemi's knee did touch the ground. All right, they got a deep man back. That is uh, Bojanic on the punt return. Big high kick, uh, particularly deep. And is caught on the 41 yard line by Rick Pajani. Looks like what they call a pooch kick. Just kick it up here nice and high, not real long, and make the receiver stand under there with a rush coming and wait for it. There's timeout on the field of play, pitch seven, Maryland three. And by a whole host of tacklers, led particularly by Al Wing Lakowski for one. And a big number of Troy Benson. Wayne Lukowski gets the primary tackle. Benson and assist. Joiner today so far on nine carries has 39 yards, Bob. All right, it'll be a second down for the Maryland Turf 7-3 fit with 440 to go in the second period of play as you look at Foz Basio facing the sideline. He also in his second year. John Sullivan from the far side. From a pro set, Frank Wright. Got plenty of time, and oh, he that time threw the ball too hard towards Willie Joyner, his intended receiver of Caesar Aldisert out of Mount Lebanon. Had a tragic thing happen in his family, had a brother. I recall the way to go to Stanford, and uh, it was his twin, a, twin uh, brother, brother. Twin brother, uh, his father's an eminent jurist, and he uh, was living in Mount Lebanon, and he died of a massive coroner. All right, now to the 45-yard line, roughly, third down, six. Flopping in now, and bring Greg Hill sending far left. Fazio's a tight end. Fazio, and it's not Fazio, that's the other Fazio, and it throws right out there. Oh, oh, oh. Back in his hand. Greg Hill was wide open. Well, it looked like a mix-up on that play, but he was wide open. That was touchdown city. I think the mix-up was that Hill was surprised the ball got there so quick and just flat out dropped it. Straight four-step drop. Wright just tosses it over there, Hill. Right through his hands. That's why they have erasers. Sometimes football players and announcers don't get them. Sadler back, Sadler back to punt from his 30. Tommy Flynn to receive. Big booming punch sends Flynn back to the 15. 
Now, as you see, he's going right. Got a uh -oh. chance for the wall of blockers. Oh, the wow. And he is driving it out of bounds. Coming at the 48-yard line. Let's see where they cover him out. It looks like he almost stepped out on the 27. He walked the chunk and got up to about the 48-yard line. I think for Saddler, the man that punted the ball, knocked him out of bounds. I think the block you're going to see, which was a crushing block, comes from number 52, Tommy Cropper. Let's watch. You're going to see Flint start cutting it up. Watch this block coming up. Hopefully you get a chance to see it. There you go. Tommy Crawford on the block on number 82. Rogers, the tight end, and Flint turns it up. Whatever. I don't know who taught him the block, but they sure did a good job. Yeah, the punter's the guy that stopped him, Mr. Savage. Now, look at that drive, not flat. As uh, Bill Wallace got flattened over on the near sideline, Parker, the right guard, unloaded on a man youngster by the name of Mike Boyd, a senior in there. Boy, the terms are hitting, too. Yeah, Mike Boyd is not lettered for this as a senior getting a chance to play in the running back spot. It'll be a second down and eight yards to go. Eastern football, physical football, you're seeing it right here today. Matt Stennett for the near sideline, 7-3 Pittsburgh. Congemic. And a beautiful catch for the yard of bounds. Tell you what, that was some catch. Glendale Jones leveled him. What did I say about physical football? Receiver sticks his arms up in the air like that. It leaves his ribs unprotected. Here's Kajimi back. He's got him wide open between two defenders. But Jones is going to come over. Watch this. Stick his helmet right in his chest. He got knocked out of bounds by the defender. I don't know what the rule is in college on that, Bob. He sure looked like bounds. he was knocked out of bounds. He was in bounds, catching the ball, got knocked out of bounds by the defender. So he got knocked out of bounds. Yes, sir. Third down and eight, congenic. Mm -hmm. Fight for yardage as he finally gets knocked out on the 49 by Tom Parker. And uh, the marker on the play. How about number 91 speed on that play? He caught him from behind. He could come up, kid. He was a flyer. Parker. Parker, Tommy Parker. 264. That's all he weighs. 6'2, 264. This is the kid He's I was a freshman. Right. This was a kid I was telling you that in a couple of years he may be one of the best defensive linemen in, in college football. Tom Parker is a freshman. He ran all the way across the field to cut down Kajemi at that point. Let's see what the officials call here. I don't uh, think he needs a couple of years, Tab. He looks pretty good right now. He is ready. Just to all be right, one of the best. There's a push off against the Panthers. Right. Declined. Oh, by uh, Maryland, and it'll be fourth down now, and about nine yards to go. So the punting team has come in, and Maryland will drop its man back, Rick Bodonic, standing back on his own ten. Let's see if Maryland puts pressure on Retchio. They're bringing everybody. Touchdown. Number 42, Wretched, is blocked by number 42, Doug Cox. Touchdown, Bell. 42 to 42. That was something, man. They brought everybody but the kitchen sink on that play. Well, Bob, like you said at the top of the show, the kicking game could be the factor, and it sure was in that play. Here, Here we is. go. Here's a look. Retchie has become a two-step punter, but two steps didn't help him this time. Right off the fingertips of number 42. Cox, number 42. Cox blocks 42. Retchie takes it for a touchdown. 36-yard return on the touchdown by Cox. How about that? Back to live action. We got ourselves a great ball game here, ladies and gentlemen, across the nation. In and around uh, the Maryland and Pittsburgh area. Look at this. When was the last time you s you've seen this, Gunner? We're going well, Penn State did it last year, and it didn't work. Now they're going swing over. They're trying to get everything organized to see if they can do a particular play as Frank Rich is that Rick is going to be the holder. Kick is up in the air. It's good. And Atkinson knocks it through there. And so they have a ball game going. Maryland. Now, here in the second quarter, 3.13 to go, leading by the score of 10 to 7.
pleasant flight over here today from Pittsburgh. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Robert J. O'Keefe from Washington Aviation. Well, he and his wife fly. We all thought she was not only prettier, but a better pilot. <laughs> all right. Now we have uh, Stone and Bailey in there. Bailey at the fullback from the pro set, Jimmy. Gonna put it up. Going for all of it. Wow, I'm going to tell you, a little pumping around. Boy, that could have been offensive interference right there, Bob. Oh, by Bill Wallace. I didn't see that one at all. There was a lot of fun. That was intended for Wallace and Lindell Jones were there. I thought there was a lot of bumping up there on that play. Straight fly pattern, and Jones. I'll tell you, that Lindell Jones is showing me something here. He's had him step mm -hmm. for step. He got burned early on the one play, but ever since that one play, he's, he's played well. Second down, 10, 10 7 Maryland. Three minutes to go in the second quarter. Out of the eye formation with Congemi at quarterback. Gives it off to his up back, McIntyre. McIntyre gets to the 25 for a game of about five. Tumble, recover now. 95, looks like he's got it. Let's double check. Who is big number 95 for Maryland? That's who clean, not Furman. Looks like Tyrone Furman has picked up the ball. Six foot one, 255. This. Furman dominates the line. We're going to look to see if we can pick up the fumble. I think somebody reaches in and the ball comes loose. You can't really see it. The ball is in the pile somewhere, and it looks like Furman has come up with it. Well, I think Allen. he just stripped it on him. That's right. And he gives it off now to Daddio. And Daddio, the fullback, is roaring into the pit territory deep, and the Terps are on fire. Leading 10-7. They're trying for more with 2.40 to go. Second period of play. They bring off Greg Hill. Really, we ought to be all that as you look at uh, the Maryland cheerleaders. Obviously ecstatic at this point in time as the ball rests on the Pittsburgh 7 to 18 yard line. Now they'll bring a man near uh, Fazio, Ron Fazio. Watch out for this Maryland ground team. It's powerful. Pitch back down to the deep man there, Willie Joyner, running left, tries to cut it back up with his head on the 15 yard line by Dennis Atia. Along with Al Wengelinkowski. Wengelinkowski all over the field here this afternoon. 10 to 7 is the score of the Maryland Turks with just under two minutes to go as Ron Fazio comes out and going into the ball game, or goes into the game, I should say. Well, Pitt's going to have to uh, suck it up. Suck it up here, I guess, Bob. Now it'll be third down a yard to go. Two tight ends in the game, Fazio and Rogers. With the man in motion, that is Berkovich. Off he goes to the left side and down the other side. Fumble, fumble, fumble. On the play. Let's see who's got the ball. The Panthers say they do. Let's wait till they unpile. There's a hard running play by Willie Joyner. They're going to mark it down. He says it was down. Ball was down on the five yard line. First and goal for Maryland. Let's Here's look at play. it. Joyner takes the pass, runs upfield. The ball hasn't come loose yet. He was down. That was a very good call. He hit the ground and popped out. And an excellent call by the officials. No hands, ifs, or buts about it. Joyner. Maryland first and goal on the five-yard line. Timeout has been called by the Maryland Turks. And I'll tell you, this is a Well, I'll tell you what, Bob, we're going to need it. We're going to need a goal line stand out of the Panthers. Or, but I don't know. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. That Maryland's got the momentum going for them. They're cracking the left side or the right side of the pit line. They're running to their left almost on every play. And that time they sent a man in motion, and he led the blocking, and then they ran the play inside. Coach, Bobby Ross. It is 10 to 7 in favor of Maryland. They're knocking on the goal line. First and goal on the five. They had 16 to go, Bob. Willie John, he loses a couple of yards. Al Wenglikowski. Yep, and Weatherspoon helped him out on that one, too. Just came into the game. So it'll be second down and goal. The ball is on about the six. As they bring in another player, Billy Rogers, the clock rolling with 56 seconds to go in the half. So there's time for maybe one or two more plays if they throw it. And the timeout they have left to try the field goal if necessary. In motion, Berkovich. Fake. 
play action pass over the middle. And uh, not caught. Intended down there for Ron Fazio. And Chris Knight. Big star Alvesek helped break up the play as you watch it again. Here's Wright. He'll fake the handoff to Daddio, who will be their big runner in a situation like this. And he goes downfield to the wide receiver breaking away. A little bit long, he had to jump for it. It went off his hands and incomplete. Nice pass, though. Well, I think that's 30. That was a tight end. Chris Knight dropped that ball. Yeah, right. Falls it off to the flat. But he's been knocked down flat. Daddy O. And he is level down there. Troy Benson takes him up to the ball, Bob. Takes him up to the ball. Troy Benson and Melvin Dean had that play red almost at the time the ball was snapped. They knew it was going to be a, a screen out to the running back. They were out there, forced a turnover. Pitts got the ball. Here we go. We got to look at it. Right, going back. He'll come out to the halfback. Joiner. There's Troy Hill. And Alvesir down there. They leveled him. Rather, Dean. I think it was Dean that made the hit, shaking the ball loose. I think they stripped it. Yep, I think they did. Well, momentum just went on the side of the Pitt Panthers. 25 seconds to go. Maryland 10, Pitt 7. It looks like you're going to run the clock out, Bob. And Jimmy just sat right down on the ball, which is not a bad move when you, uh, you've uh you got to get yourself regrouped, and that's no place to try anything through. Not down that deep. Maryland 10, the clock running, <laughs> Pitt 7. They're kicking on off, and there will not be another play as they run a 4, 3, 2, 1. And there's the end of the half, and Maryland goes to the locker room. Out on top of the Panthers of Pitt, Maryland 10, Pitt 7. We'll be back right after this. Second half the score, Maryland 10 and Pitt 7, and of course the Panthers will be on the offense, and we'll set them for you when they get back out there. And Jimmy will be a quarterback. Brings now to the near sideline. Back back to the up back and he is nailed immediately. And Maryland comes out fighting with fire in their nostrils. We'll look at some of the maneuvering around on the sideline by the Pantherettes and their cheer style. Now, Bob DePaul is the man that made the tackle there. We'll set the pitch for you in a moment. Uh, sending now in motion far to the right anyhow. Bill Wallace, who is the split end, and a man in the slot, uh, Dwight Collins. Congemi to the deep back, Darnell Stone, and he's going nowhere. And Maryland really pursued on that play, Bob. They weren't fooled by any of that, uh, that fakery at all. They just went right for old Darnell. Eric Wilson, inside linebacker, made the stop as uh, Maryland sent in a couple of young players. Now, Gil Hopper is coming as a left touchback. Maryland along with Bob Gunderman. So far, Foge Fazio isn't breaking game plan. Establish the run, throw the short passes. He's in a passing situation now with third and eight, it looks like. He's going to have to put it in the air. All right, he's brought now to the near sideline. Dwight Collins far, Wallace near. And Jimmy on a handoff the middle. He's got a big hole for Bailey. Bailey with a big run gets out across the 30 and is knocked out of bounds across the 35. And there is the play. Pitt needed to get out from underneath everything as Baldwin and Cross come across the field to make the stop. But that is a big one as they trapped off the left side and sprung Bailey for a big run. What did I say about putting the ball in the air? That's a sure way to fool somebody is when you're expecting throw, run, and when you're expecting run, throw. And that drop play worked out for Pitt. They got the first down. Down their own 36-yard line. Out of the eye formation. 10-7 Maryland here in the third quarter play just underway. Conjemi. And hands it off to Marlon McIntyre. Eric Wilson makes the stop. What you're seeing here are a lot of flip-flops on the backfield. McIntyre and Bailey pull back. And they're also working a lot in there with McCall and Darnell Stone. More Darnell Stone. Right? Every now and then Mike Boyd gets a call. Well, Foch has the, the running backs and the wide receivers and sometimes a tight end bringing the plays from the sidelines for Kajemi. All right. Bill Wallace is split far to the right. White Collins flank to the left. Now to the deep back, Darnell Stone. No yardage at all. Bob DePaul 
inside linebacker comes from the right side and cracks him down. Had a loss of yard or two on the play. I think Bob Brown, the, who's, who's in the offensive line at right guard right now, was supposed to pull and trap and didn't, didn't really get out far enough. You see Bob, Bob Brown moving out in front of Stone. He picked up the first guy, but there were two other guys out there just waiting for Darnell Stone. I think they might be keying on that Darnell. Now they move Dwight Collins, a uh, flanker to the right with a pro set to the near sideline, Bill Wallace. It's third down seven, Congeny wants to put it up, does, and no the throws, and uh, he threw in the area of a man who thought was going to get open, McIntyre, and I don't know whether or not on that full box screen he knew what he was doing, whether he turned the wrong way or what. Well, I think Congeny was smart enough to throw the ball away, he kind of drilled it into the ground where nobody was in the flat, and uh, attribute to, to John Kajemi right there. All right, a punting situation Rex here now. Last time he punted with Clark, Rick Kajanik. They've got 10 men up front again. Maryland does, and they're coming. Oh, snap. He gets it away, and it's a high, wobbly kick. Going to bounce around, take a pit bounce, and gets to the 22, and he smothered Bojanic. Rick Bojanic smothered on that play, but the pitch got a break on that one. It was a kind of a high, wobbly punt against the wind, and then took a pit bounce. Well, they sent everybody there on that play, Bob. Everybody but the chancellor. Everybody but the chancellor, and he wasn't suited up. Yeah. All right, on the 24-yard line, Maryland's ball, and they have Frank Reich at quarterback, Boomer Assassin on the sideline with a pro set. Put in motion now. The left half and counterplay coming to the opposite side with Daddy O. Mike Lekowski diagnoses it, but not before Maryland moves the ball very close to their own 30-yard line. Big hole. They just ran into the gap between the the Panthers 52 defense found the hole and picked up some yardage and Bob I'm impressed with this junior quarterback filling in for Boomer Esaias and Frank Reich having a good game. All right now that Joe Berkovich from Elizabeth Forward High School in Pittsburgh on that last play was really driving the ball hard. Now they put a man in motion to the left and here is Willie Joyner. Well, I'll tell you, Gunner, they are really popping in the trenches. Yes, and they're trapping a couple of guys. They're letting you in and then popping it from the side. So they're moving it all. First down, Maryland. Bob Shilkin. Getting a lot of calls there at the middle guard spot. That was Joyner's 13th carry of the game. He now has 53 yards. The Pitt Panthers, defensively, you must remember, give up an average of about 80 yards going into this game per game. Oh, a little mix up in the backfield and he's smothered, knocked down by his own man and Wayne Lukowski covers him very quickly. They put another man into that ball game for the Maryland Terps, a big number 81 and we'll pick up some information on him in a moment. Then we get a good look at it. There's the mix up right there. A little brush of the shoulders. It looked as if Mike wanted to move out. Some pit Panthers there to meet him. Knocked him dead in his tracks and now it's second and long. For Maryland. Looks like a passing situation, Tim. Better believe it. Pitt sort of thinks so, and they blitz, but they give it off instead to their deep back coming around Daddy O, and he goes wide. He won't get enough yardage, but he made a lot before Tom Flynn came up to grab him. Well, you see one of the strongest guys on the playing field right now, Dave Daddy O, bench presses over 400 pounds, stick an arm out and just kind of push Al Wing Lukowski aside and Wing is not weak himself. He's a, he's a heavy hitter and a strong guy, but Daddy O is one of the best athletes out there today. They tell me he's a pro prospect, too. Third down and 10 yards to go. Well, with all the pro leagues going in the world, you can almost just put on a suit and be a pro prospect now. But the International Football League starting up, too, huh? All right. Maryland on top, 10 and 7. Right. Uh, gets it up there to Bill Rogers. And they get away for the first down, and Tom Flynn comes out, and there's no question that what Pitt is right now in a state of confusion. Reich is finding the holes in the Pitt Panther secondary, and so is the receivers. Here you get a look at it. He's going to fade straight back, five-step drop. He's going to plant. Rogers comes over the middle, perfect spiral, good hands, good catch, first down. Sure-handed Tommy Flynn, who will play more football than anybody for Pitt. All right, now coming to the near side off the field is Hill. John Sullivan is on. Reich sets him into a pro set. 
with a first down, 10 on their own, 45. Pitching it back now to Daddio. Daddio up to the 50, mark around the play, up on about the 45-yard line as Tom Flynn makes the stop. And the marker's thrown into that backfield, so you've got to figure Maryland has been cut doing something they should not do, like a hold or something like that. Yeah, I think they were holding on that play, Bob. I notice on the pit defense, Chris Dolman is into the game for pit. He's back up. Um, defensive end, but it looks like they're playing in a linebacker position today. Yes, they've had to make a few moves. It was now Pittsburgh's Joe Berkovich has been coming and doing a lot of hard running, too. The extra out of Elizabeth Cole High School are going to mark the ball back on a holding infraction against Maryland. We'll see where they'll end up dropping it. So it'll be a long yardage play coming up. Ball will be back on the 34-yard line as Greg Hill returns, 10-7. You mentioned Chris Dolman. He normally is a starter at the right end for Pitt, but he had a uh, a little bit of a problem in spring camp and got bumped back to third team, worked his way back to second team, and now he's playing behind Sapio. All right, now Eric Holder to the near sideline, Greg Hill far, first down, 20. Bang, nothing, hardly, yard, maybe. Boy, there was some serious hitting yep. in that line, that play. Yes, Pittsburgh uh, is finding itself back in there on the ball. Troy Benson going up against his brother, Sean. Sean Benson is out of Altoona in his fifth year. He was redshirted one year, 6'2", 252-pound right guard. And a linebacker, his brother, Troy, 6'2", 225-pound. And they are banging hits. Jeff Baldwin is also in there for Tim Quinn's two right now. Now, oh, take a look at right. Drops back, screen pass. Marker on the play, ball up to the 30. Completed to Berkovich out of Pittsburgh, up to the 40-yard line. Knocked down by Troy Benson. Marker on the play, back on the 27. I think that's going to go against Maryland, and it would be wise at this point, I believe, for Pitt just to decline the penalty. I'll tell you, Bob, how'd you like to feed those Benson kids? Well, they have two more like them. One of them's playing for the New York Jets. They said the mother, when the fight started, used to sit down and just wait to find out how much furniture had to be bought. It had to be replaced, huh? Oh, they said it was brutal. They're fine youngsters, though, and uh, Maryland caught with a hold. They're looking toward the sideline to see what's going to happen here. Remember now, if you push them back, you might want to do it. I don't know. It's up to they refuse okay. But remember, they got the wind at their back, so you really aren't gaining an awful lot. I'd be inclined to let them be a spark forward as possible, so they punt the ball through the end zone. So they'll decline and take the down, and it'll be second down, 24 yards on their own, 31-yard line, bring Greg Hill to the near sideline, and send Eric Holder farther left and Willie Joyner as a setback. Willie Joyner with the ball, cut to the 30, to the 35, cracks to the 40-yard line, before he's stopped again by Al Wengelikowski. Maryland 10. Pittsburgh 7, 8.40 to go in the third period of play. And in making an upset if it stays this way. There's some awful, awful fears hitting down there, Bob. There's Boomer Sison on the sidelines. Well, you know, uh, Pat Douglas had said earlier that they said they're really quite like each other, the only difference being one's left hand and one's right hand. That's right. Frank Reich uh, at the quarterback throw set, coming straight back. Sets up. Pressure. Fires. And it is hot, they say, across the 50. He didn't single catch. He just ran in and marked the ball. So it's awfully close to a first down, but the official didn't call Eric Holder for the ball. ball. That's, a good, that's a good pass and a better catch. Watch this pass by Frank Reich. Good catch. By the wide receiver, however, he is short, and Merrill is going to have to kick it away. Wang Lekowski was the guy putting the pressure on uh, Frankie Reich. Now Flynn uh, standing way back, just waiting, and there's a one that should go through everything. If it takes a Maryland bounce, they got a shot. Can they stop it? Ooh. They got it on the three. That's what they played for, and they got it. Brilliant play by the Maryland Turks. And the ball was down by Gil Hoffman, or... Bob Gunderman. Bob Gunderman was the man that did it. Well, the score, Maryland 10, Pitt 7 on this timeout. Ball on the three-yard line, first and 10. And the Panthers have called for the timeout. 
I'll tell you one thing. Uh, Maryland, as we were all talking, played West Virginia and jumped on top 10 to nothing very early in the game. And then the West Virginia Mountaineers just put it to them and physically beat them as well as everything else. But the way Maryland is playing the Panthers here today, Flaggy Morris, they seem to put their aches and pains aside for another day. Well, I'll tell you, Bob, you know, of course, uh, you were telling me before the game that uh, the Maryland bus driver took the West Virginia team for a little spin before the game, and they, they didn't get here until 15 minutes before the kickoff. Um, by the time West Virginia woke up, they were losing 10 to nothing. Well, not only did, did West Virginia beat Maryland, Maryland beat themselves last week. They made a number of mistakes and penalties cost them. Uh, they're a good football team. I, I don't take anything away from the Maryland Terrapins, and they're certainly shown it against Pitt. I, that was a 44-yard punt, incidentally, by the kid Stadler, and he's he's averaging 38-plus in the punt category today, so he's doing well. We're watching something here. I don't know whether that timeout is charged to the officials. I think it was. was about I think it's an official timeout as we look at the... Uh, and Jimmy in his puddle, but they're doing something far across the field over they're there, unwrapping the chains. Yeah, it looks like they're working on the chains. So Be does, first in nine and a half. Huh? Yeah, it does appear to me that uh, this is an official timeout, not charged to pit. Now, that may become a factor. That's why we're checking, because the timeouts are remaining for both teams. It says three, and that, that would be right. John Kajemi is six for 17 for 51 yards, as you saw on your screen a little bit earlier. He had a much better game in his first game last week against Temple. He was 15 of 23 for 177 yards and one touchdown. The only difference is Temple is not Maryland. That's absolutely right. Now you got that right, Bob. Maryland is not Temple. Kent Jimmy gives it up now. There he is trailing back. And Maryland's claiming they have the ball, Bob. I don't know whether Darnell Stone caught it up or not, but Paul is the guy in there wrapping it. They're a big pile up. Let's wait till they come out and see. There's Pittsball. Pittsball. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You know who came flying out of that pack? Mark Bailey. All right, McIntyre has come in now. Here he is in the game. Jimmy takes the handoff. It's a smooth handoff to Stone. I can't tell. I think a so ball popped no loose. No, the ball popped right. loose underneath. And the linebacker is fighting with the... They're back to live action, and straight ahead goes Darnell Stone. On that previous play, what you saw was that Darnell Stone knocked away and no football, and coming up out of there, I'm sure, is that fullback I told you about, Mark Bailey. Because Darnell Stone, when he went down, did not have that football. All right, now we have a third down five. Hit on their own uh, pocket nine, eight-yard line. Will they, to seven, Maryland. will they pull a draw or will they go to the air? I'm going to see what they do with you. Right here, right from Jimmy. A spinning drive up there from the slot by Darnell Stone and Furman and Cuck are stopping in there. I think he's got it, Bob. He's, he's pretty close. close. Pretty close. Well, that's a hard drive that time. I'll tell you, that second spin that Darnell made when he was hit. He spun and he got the first down. That's a big one for the Panthers. 10-7 Maryland, 5.50 to go in the third quarter of play. We're talking a lot about the Maryland defense, but a guy who's having himself a great day out there is outside linebacker J.D. Gross, the senior who's 6'223 pounds, having a great day. Darnell Stone, not bad either. 42 uh, yards. They're going out of the eye formation now. Pitching it back to Darnell Stone. Hit for a loss. Eric Wilson blitzing from the left corner spot. Roared through there unmolested and knocked him down. I'll tell you, he's having some game, that Wilson. Here we get a good look at it. Can Jimmy, the, the deep pitch to Stone, he turns it up. And here's where Wilson makes the play. That's that's good football right there. Stuck the helmet right in the numbers, and Stone is down for a loss. He well, just Randy, zeroed, zeroed right in on him. Bob. Randy Dixon tried to block him, just couldn't pick him up. All right, now we have out of the eye. To the up back, it goes Mark Bailey. The fullback, he gets flaming hard. Oh, 15, out of the 15 and across the 20, all by his lonesome. He battled for about six yards. Great running, and... In that case, we saw the Maryland defense over pursue too much, and Bailey got an opportunity to turn it back inside and shake free. He had a second, third, and fourth effort on that play. Shake it up a little bit down there. 
trainers are coming out on the field. Well, he was running hard, and he was wide open when he got hit. The devil jacket, him looked like he got popped right there in the kidney area a little bit. That's a tender spot. There's a break in the action with timeout. Maryland 10, pitch 7. Under your feet, the way the birds sing and the chipmunks chatter, the way a squirrel scrambles up a tree. That's why I'm asking you to please be careful with fire. Because when we lose a forest, we lose a lot more than meets the eye. I ought to know. I'm Ray Charles. Brandy's Meeting, Eating, and Drinking Place, rated by Muddy Magazine as one of the top restaurants in the nation where one can dine both well and inexpensively. For all of you who have always wanted to dine at Brandy's but never had the time, now's the time. Brandy's, known for great food and solid drink. But most importantly, Brandy's is a fun place, a people place, a good time place. Brandy's, a delicious experience anytime. 200 Main Street in Irwin and in the heart of the fabled strip district. All right, Moe's Pizio talking things over there with Chris Jellick. And here is to the impact Marlon McIntyre. And another scramble on there. And the Maryland Turks, without any question, with their wide tackle six, led by Tyrone Furman, 255 pound senior, is there on fire. I'll tell you what, that's number 91. Tom Parker is having some game. Hey, who comes in running in and out fit? He's just a freshman. He's just a freshman, yeah. He's going to be around for three more years. Incidentally, Parker was named the player of the game last week defensively for Maryland against West Virginia. Rick, he is standing on his own 10. We'll go to Rick Bodonic. Against the wind, good pass from center. Good, beautiful, spiraling, lazy hang time punt to the 37, to the 40. And with a banger on the 42, bounces out, starts to go wide, gets out, goes to the 45, and finally knocked down after a brilliant try to get wide to the outside. Now you know why Bodonic is such a valuable player to this club. He returns, punts, he's a running back, he does everything. He's got sure hands, he's extremely strong, and I think his mistake there was he ran into his old man rather than turning it upfield. I'll tell you, if he doesn't run into that old man, his old man, he's, that way, he's gone. That's right, no, I'll tell you, thank you. Here comes Greg Hill to the near sideline. Frank Reich, 10 7 Maryland. Now flops his end, Fazio, to the near side as a tight end. Reich looks for it, oh. and he's nailed behind, and they pass out quickly, and it's complete up to his. Uh, Running back, Rick Bodonic, the man you just saw run the ball back, and Cesar Alvesert knocked him out of bounds, but not before they picked up some good yardage with the ball as across the 50 and down to the pit 48 yard line. 10 7 Maryland, third quarter, 325 to go, and the Turks are driving. And no, you're not looking at Boomer Esaias, and you're looking at Frank Wright. He's Sean, doing a good job. Sean Sullivan has come into the ball game. He's Frank Wright right is right. Right to the right, now with a pro set. Sets up fast, they bat it up into the air by big number 56. And I'll tell you, Chris Dolman did a job there. The young junior at 6'6", 220, bang that one out of there. I don't know whether Sapio is out of the lineup because he's hurt or whether he had a rough first half. But here you see Chris Dolman deflected. Nobody had a chance to pick it up out of the air, but Chris Dolman is having a good second half in place of Bill Sapio. Well, you know, you know, Tab and Bob, uh, Chris Dolman started most games last season, and he, and he did, Tab, he did have a little bit of a problem, but he's some kind of football player when he gets on track. Yep. All right, Maryland has called for a timeout. They made a couple of big substitutions there. They called timeout down on the field to play, and with timeout, the score. Maryland 10, pitch 7. Mervis Motors Mercedes Benz, where sales is only the only. Oh, about a 49-yard field goal, and then the pit 
Pilot in, broke one, and one over from the two for a touchdown. As their fullback banged through from about what, two to three yards out, and Mark Bailey. And then a block punt by Mark Cox, who's 20, 40, number 42. Doug Cox, I should say, and he blocked the punt of number 42, Tony Retchia, and ran about 42 yards for the touchdown by which they lead, 10-7. Now, here we go, third down, right, to the right flat, back to his punt, Jonah, Jonah breaks it, gets into the open, to the 40, down to the 32-yard line, as a Maryland trip, her driver, Melvin Dean, finally knocks him down. A great play for the Maryland trip, starting on the pit, 48, and ran it on down to about the third line. Here you're going to see Bob Shook in the middle guard miss a tackle, and it, it's not Bob Shook, and excuse me, it was a Caesar Outer sir, miss a tackle in the backfield. Joyner has a tendency to make a lot of defensive players miss him, and he gets good yardage on that. He ran Short through about. Screen. He ran through about five of them on that play. All right, Maryland has a first down on the 32-yard line. They lead 10 to 7 with three, three minutes to go in the third quarter here at College Park, Maryland. And there you see Willie Joyner, number 34, in the backfield there with it. Eric Colbert in motion now. Goes as a slot back, straight up the slot. He goes big number four, Rick Bartonic. Who's a man that they use for their punt and kickoff returns, sure-handed, and a hard driver, 5'9", 206. He's compactly born. I'll tell you, Bob, those Maryland offensive linemen are moving a little bit off the ball now. And they're starting to pick up some serious yardage on them. Maryland leading 10-7 here in the third period of play. Now bring to the near sideline Eric Holder. Send Greg Hill as a slot far left. Out of a pro set, Frank Wright. Time! He does not like the way the line is set up on the pit defense. He doesn't like it, so he calls for timeout. Smart play when you're not sure what's going on. I think Pitt had a, a little bit different look there. They had the, they had a, a middle linebacker in, in that play. And I don't think Maryland, I don't think he'd seen that defense before. Been down five. The ball is on the 27-yard line of Pitt. Long count. There goes that Johnny. Well, they are working traps and everything. Yeah, he's right to the pilot pit line. Chris Goldman is all over the field. He made the tackle or assisted on the tackle. Coming all the way from his right side. Look at the thighs on number 40. Very compact, strongly built, five foot nine. Really. Uh, he's a he's a tough cust he's a tough customer, Bob. There he is now on the pro set. Eric Holder to the near sideline. Straight back drops, catches and ran on the right flat to Eric Holder. Troy Hill knocks him out of bounds inside the 15. Maryland's really mixing it up now. They're going to the passes to the sideline after going to the short passes from the running back, and they've got everything in their favor now. They're grinding it out. Here's Reich, the short down and out to the receiver. Holder. I don't know if you can see it there, but Dolman almost got a hand, hand on that ball. He's he's all over the place. Greg Hill has gone far and out of the left. Eric Holder to the right in motion goes Holder. He comes a slot back, and it's again to the up back. That's a very little jump for a couple of yards down to about the 10, very close to the 10 yard line. For the center of that line, steps in there. And Troy Benson. Another first down, Bob. And it's a first down 10. Now the ball is just this side of the 10, so they can make a first down without a touchdown. Joyner showed a lot of strength on that play. He's known as their quick back, but he's got a lot of power in those legs. He drove for the extra yard it needed to pick up the first down for Maryland. He's got 66 yards on 15 carries today. All right, let's see. In the backfield now, Diadio Bonajek. Now it's giving it off to Badani. But Dunnick goes across the bar, knocked out of bounds on about the three. Rick Bodonic, shot by Troy Benson and Chris Dolman. And it's a battle there as they wreck it down to about the three-yard line. Maryland knocking with a third down to go. He's carrying the ball like a loaf of bread. Fortunately, he tucked it under his arm before the rush got there. And he picked up a good six, seven yards on that play. Actually, he picked up eight. 
Set them down to three. They don't need they need three for the first round, three and a half for the touchdown. In motion. A pitch goes to Bergano, going wide left, and he's going to be stopped down for a loss, but he's hard to bring down. Boy, you can't tackle that guy one-on-one. -on -one. You need some help. What you've got to do is string him out, like the pit defense did there. Look for support coming from your linebackers, and it worked out for the Panthers there. Here you see it. Man in motion coming to the left. Kodanek takes the ball, and here's where you see Dean and Callahan. Spread them out. They get some support from Dolman. Troy Benson, and finally he comes down. That's a loss of about five. What they need, the Panthers, if they're to do anything here, is to hold them here and make them go for the field goal, and then with the wind to back in the fourth quarter. There is the end of the third period of play. Maryland. To get to about the one-half yard line for our first down, of course for Pitt. What they've got to try to do is quite obvious. That is to stop the touchdown, give up no more than the field goal, in order to put themselves in a position to win a 14 points. I'll tell you, though, Bob, Maryland, will, if they don't make it on this play, will go for the field goal because that'll make Pitt have to score twice to win the football game. All right, here we go. Frank Reich under center. Drops back, fires a long one for the far flat, bumping around down there, kicked out. Great defensive play. Greg Hill for man, for, for whom that pass was intended. And a great bit of play by Troy Hill, the co-captain in the left corner. Now they go in with a field goal uh, unit. At this point, that'll be accurate. That was a good play on Maryland's part, too, because what you hope for in a situation like that is to get an interference call in the end zone and a first down and goal from the one. So it's a safe play. You throw it out of the end zone, or you get the interference call, or you get the touchdown. Now they get three points if they make it. Uh, Reich is going to hold, and... Uh, Atkinson is going to try it. He's had a 49-yard field goal and one point after it. Sidewinder, as you can see. Ball down, kick is up, and it is good. So now, right, Atkinson, when we boot it off, we'll be running at it from the side of the up with it. No, the little run on through, and it'll be a touchback. It looked as though for a moment, like Boyd thought Stone was going to take it, or Stone thought Boyd was going to take it, and neither one took the ball. Lack of communication, lack of concentration, and I'm sure Bo Trezio isn't happy what he sees from also from his kickoff return team. And well, they had it all ready to come down the wall on the sure. far side, and nobody took the ball. Yep. All right, so here it is, first down, 10 on their own, 20 yard line, Maryland 13, pitch 7. To the near sideline comes Wallace, and in the slot is Dwight Collins, out of the eye, from Jimmy. Right back, all right, to Wallace, to the 20 yard line, oh. into the clear, and knocked out of bounds. Up around the 40 yard line. Wallace knocked out of bounds by Al Covington. As I said earlier in the game, that is what Pitt has been working on all this week. The short passes. Here you see Kajemi. Three, four-step drop. Quick out to Wallace. Wallace turns it upfield. Now see if the if the defensive back commits himself, that allows Wallace to head down the sidelines and maybe a touchdown. All right, now we have Dwight Collins in the slot. And Wallace is far left. Out of the eye, Kajemi. Now it brings a pro set into the picture and again Scott good blocking on the left side fires a long one deep down the right side oh cut on a sensational grab down there on the 28 yard line by Dwight Collins he'll have to come back no Dwight this isn't professionals yet you'll get there but not this time around when you're down you're down great pass by John Kajemi I'll tell you I think uh, I, I think uh, Dwight was a little disgusted with himself falling down. Great protection on the offensive line for Kajemi. Collins has his man beat by almost three yards. Makes the catch, a rolling catch. That's the one Pitt needed. All right, first down on the play. They got the wrong way to play, you know. First down, 10 on the 27-yard line of Maryland. I think he's auto doing right here, Bob. Kajemi. Again, we've got to get blind side block. He got last by Baker. With well, a wide tackle six that Maryland's defense uses, they can send up to eight guys. In that particular play, they sent seven men. Here can Jimmy Audible. He's 
rolling back. He doesn't see the rush coming blindside. And there you see the defensive back. Number two coming in and making the play. Brian Baker. Actually, Baker is used in that situation as a strong safety, a blitzing strong safety. Normally, he's a linebacker. 34-yard pass play setting him in this place. As McIntyre comes in, a forward pitch to McIntyre and goes up to or down to about the 26-yard line. To take that time and just a little forward pitch to McIntyre. Brian Baker makes the stop coming up from Bra, strong safety. What put Pitt in this position as you watch this now, he fakes it to freeze the secondary and then pitches it forward. The Yo, shovel pass. The old shovel, Bob. Went out in the days of the Fox Chapel Harriers. What, what Harriers, Harriers were those? The Fox Chapel Harriers. Oh. Now here's Bill Wallace. This is, left. This is right a big college. To the near sideline. Third down, nine. Blitz. White Collins, white eye of the 20. Going to be very close to a first down. They're going to have, it's not a first down. It is not a first down. It falls on the 19. Look at that perfect spiral coming from the hands of Kajemi. Now Collins catches the ball and falls away from the first down marker and back one yard. So it comes up one yard short. Pitt's going to go for it. All right. Fourth down, two yards to go. Collins wasn't in the huddle that time. He doesn't know the play. Well, now they just told him. Now he, he, no, he back. still doesn't know the play. There he goes. Jimmy from the pro set gives it off to uh, his fullback, Jackson, who is McIntyre. He does a forward one and one half twist with a pike. I uh, give him nine on the dive and first and ten. First and ten play. on the play. Bob used to be a diver in his college days. Nine, he knows about that. Was nine that? on the dive, first and ten on the field. Was that the, was that the pike position, Bob, yeah, or the pike, pike position? All right. right. With a half tuck. <laughs> Here's Jimmy handing off to McIntyre. Watch him go over the top. See Good the twist. by Stone. I didn't notice the twist, Bob. You see, that's a twisting one and one half. With they got the chains on. First down, fifth. First down. Now, that's a good play, and the Panthers trailing in this ball game. The score, 13-7 Maryland, with 12.50 to go in the fourth quarter. And the game and threw a good block for McIntyre to go over the top. All right, now, Dwight Collins. Two tight ends, Bob. Yeah, two tight ends, and Dwight Collins is by the left on the eye. And Jimmy. Straight back over the middle. That's one of those pass jobs intended for Clint Wilson, and that's a very dangerous one because that's right in the middle of where they're all packed in, that Tom Parker and company. Anything around that Tom Parker, he only weighs 264 pounds. He's a freshman, and he's on a... came here on a dietary scholarship. Well, he goes bear hunting for, oh. with a switch. I don't even think he needs that, partner, because you see the first downs, 11 to 10. They're on the score, 13-7 Maryland. Pick trying to get in here, down on about the Maryland 15-yard line. And Jemmy, forward handoff to his fullback McIntyre. McIntyre storms down to about the 11. We had a head of steam up there, Bob. Eric Wilson, the interior linebacker on the left side, stopped him. Wide tackle, sick formation. They can put eight men up there. They can screen it. They can drop it back. There's a lot of different things they can do. Now it's third down and five, and Pick sends in a play. Came in now with Mark Bailey at pullback. Now they send Dwight Collins far to the left. Look for the tight end. And Jimmy rolling left. Fires it way over the head of the intended receiver. It ran out of the backfield. And yes, couldn't come up with it. Chucky Scales, the youngster is a freshman out of uh, Fox Chapel. Fox Chapel, I think you're right, Bob. And his daddy, or who is it? Which one of the Scales was the football player in the pros? His father. He was his, was his father his uncle? His uncle, uncle or father. We've got to find it out. That was a heads-up play by John Jimmy who threw that ball away. Was his father, Bob. Yep. All right, his father. Now, here is Eric Schubert trying to field the ball. It'll be a spotted on the 18 and 20 yard try. It was not partially blocked. It is no good. Partially blocked by third number 29 running through there for the Maryland Turks. And that is a very big play. Bob Goodman, Bob Goodman came in and blocked that kick. Well, Bob, we said on it before the game started that 
pretty evenly matched teams in the kicking game could be the could be the difference. There's a timeout down on the field of play. Drops back looking, plenty of time, fires up the middle, it is caught up there by Fazio. Fazio on the far sideline, down to the 35. Game-saving tackle by Tommy Flynn. Sure was. Here we're going to see the tight end known as the blocking tight end, not the receiving tight end, make the play. Right, over the middle. And Fazio is off and running. Here you see Tommy Flynn, the game-saving tackle at around the 35-yard line, actually the 33. And a big play, another big one from the Maryland Terrapins. 46 yards. Pass and run play. And the Turks, 13-7 leading down on the Panther 32. Greg Hill split to the near sideline. Frank Wright gives off now to Joyner. Joyner tries the left side of the pit line is stacked up when he gets to about the 30, a pickup of a yard or two. And there's no question of what Maryland is out playing a Panthers a bit as Al Wayne Glukowski makes the stop. In comes now Sean Sullivan. They have been flopping Greg Hill and Sullivan, working off also Joyner and Bojanic. And the result has been electrifying because Fazio, Rogers, the split ends, the wide receivers, Davis, particularly him, and Eric Holder have been doing their job. Eric Holder now goes far to the right. Sullivan is only a freshman, too. And he's split to the near sideline. Right to pass. Goes for it all. And it's in and out of the hands of Sullivan, the intended receiver. And Melvin Dean. Melvin Dean did his best to break it up. What a good defensive play by Melvin Dean. Played back. Read the ball coming through his territory. He's playing zone. Say he didn't do the, he didn't take the gamble to try and intercept it because that would have given, given up the, the play completely, I think. Well, I think he didn't have the gamble and intercepted. The best he could hope for was getting his hand on it, and he managed to do that with a diving play. I'll All tell right. you, the Maryland fans are really fired up. Look at him over there. Russ Davis splits to the far sideline, and uh, Greg Hill to the near sideline. Right this time, gives off to Joyner. Joyner to the 30, is hit and hit hard. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage, falls forward for a couple of extra yards as the pit defenders come swinging. And again, you see a lot of action in there for the Panthers. Al Wendlikowski and Troy Benson. Here's a handoff to Joyner. Watch him move up. You know, the Panther defense doesn't look as if it's attacking. It no. almost look, it looks as if they're just staying with their feet planted in the ground and, and not moving off the football. We're going to have a 44-yard field goal try here by Atkinson against the wind. <laughs> this is a big one for Maryland if they can get this three through. Ball down the boot. Long enough. It is wide to the near sideline. He hooked it. And that for Pitt is a very, very big play. Will give them good field position. And the score, 13-7 Maryland, still within reach. And we'll tell you one more time. A timeout in the field. In the flat to Dwight Collins. Hit from the side up on the 30. Fouls forward about the 32 by J.D. Gross and Eric Wilson. Boy, they hit him. They hit him. He's hurt. He's shaking up pretty good there. He got an awful pop on a crossbar. You know, one hit one way, one the other. And you can't have your body go in two different directions. I don't, think he saw, I don't think he saw a gross on that play. Let's take a look no. at it. Kajemi, not even a drop, just a turn at the line of scrimmage and off to Collins. Watch, you get banged this way, and here comes the other one. Right off the top of the helmet, and it looked like it, his knee bent under him underneath the tackle by Gross. Well, all right, let's, uh, they'll minister to this young man. Let's just go over the situation again for you. Maryland in this contest broke on top with a 49-yard field goal by Atkinson. As, uh, you can see the uh, rushing yard is there. The Panthers finally jumped in there to send Mark Bailey over with a touchdown from about the two-yard line, and so there was a 10-7 to ball game. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Cox, Doug Cox, that is, for Maryland, blocked Tony Retch's punt with one hand, picked it up with the other, and went scooting on in for the touchdown. Now, this is Dwight Collins, and there's no question to what that young man, uh, they got his attention. He got hit savagely on a cross block to Wilson, and uh, 
It looks as if it could be either a shoulder or a collarbone. And you don't want to see that because you're looking at a guy that averages around 40 catches a year for Pitt, has a couple of 50 catch seasons already. He's the uh, second leading all-time touchdown getter at Pitt uh, behind uh, Julius Dawkins, who was well, receiver. Who was drafted by the Buffalo Bills in the 12th round. Do we have any information, again, how far that block punt by Doug Cox, how far he ran it for? Did they have a, a, a stat on that? 39 yards. 39 yards, was it, or 40? When Cox blocked the punt and ran it in for the touchdown, Blocked it on the 36, got it on the 32. So there were a lot of twos in there. His number's 42, Rich is 42, and he picked it up with a 32, and he went for six. You'd have liked it if he'd gone for 42, wouldn't you, Bob? Well, it would have been a lot better. It would have been more for fun. All right, now we've replaced White Collins. Let's hope there's nothing serious for that young man. And Jimmy, got to put it up. Does. Has his man up on the 40-yard line, Matt Stennett. The young freshman, a highly recruited young man. Stennett was moved from running back, a wide receiver, and he's a sure-handed guy. And you hate to, you almost hate to see him in there because you know there's a problem with Dwight Collins, but uh, Stennett can do the job, and he's getting an opportunity right now at a time when the Panthers need him the most. Ball is on the 37-yard line, and that'll move the sticks for a first down. First and ten on their own, 37. Eight minutes to go in the fourth period. Marion leading 13 to 7. John Congemi, the then quarterback all the way. A delay to give off to Bailey, the fullback, trying to fight his way out and not get outside. Good he will pursuit. not get outside and take him down here with Brian Baker. Good pursuit by the Maryland defense. They forced... Here we're going to get a look at it. We're going to force the running back, Bailey, to go to the outside. Here he cuts inside. It's all tied up. He's got to go to the outside. Maryland defense strings him up. Baker, the linebacker, sometimes strong safety, in on the tackle. All right, now Matt Stennett comes to the near sideline. Out of the eye. Bill Wallace, good left from Jimmy. Going to put it up. Over the middle, uh, almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver on the Maryland 45. That was Bill Wallace, and almost caught by Clarence Baldwin. I'll Clarence tell you about that. That ball bounced out of his hands into Baldwin's hands, and he almost caught it on the rebound. He almost had a rebound on that play. He really drilled it. Baldwin had two interceptions against West Virginia last week, and once uh, one interception against Vanderbilt in Maryland's opening season win. He's got three on the year. They've made a quick switch now because it's third and nine. They know they got five backfield men in there to go. Look at them drop off. Only got three men up on the rush. You pass against this one, you better be pinpoint at Temple. And Jimmy back. And they throw it out to the back. That's what they tried to do and was blocked in there. Darnell Stone, the man for whom it was intended, that Tom McHale reached up and batted it down. Yeah, he had a piece of it. Ordered. Maryland put five backs in there. Only put on a three-man rush. And to counter the play, he tried to knock it off and couldn't do it. So Rick Pachanik is back to do the return. Retia from the 25, winded it back. Gets up, booming, high, spiraling, beautiful hang time kick. Drives him back, Pachanik to the 18. Up he comes to the 25, and down he goes on the 26, as Tony Magnelli comes in to stop him. Maryland 13, pit 7 in the fourth period. That McHale, incidentally, is, is only a sophomore, and he's starting for the injured Jim Joyce, who has a, a knee problem. Joyce is a senior, and you figure that with a sophomore in there, you're giving some up in experience, but McHale did the job on that play. There's a timeout over the Maryland's. This time he hands it off to his up back, going wide right, Willie Joyner. Willie Joyner is packed along the line of scrimmage, and Chris Dolman finally drives him to the turf. Maryland 13, pitch 7. Been very few penalties in this ball game. You know that, gentlemen? You know what? I'll tell you, I, I think that Tad's right when he says that the pit defense does not seem to be attacking the, the Maryland offense, and except for Chris Dolman, they, they seem to be sound asleep out there. 
Dolman has been all over the field. Of course, he didn't start this game. Sapio did. All right, we got a two-yard pickup on the last play. Second down eight. Maryland leading 13-7. 6.55 to go in the game. Now, Reich wants to put it up. Goes deep. He wants it all. And it's what a beautiful play down there by the secondary, Troy Hill. The pass intended for the wide receiver, Eric Holder. What a play by Troy Hill. I'll tell you, the pit secondary has done a super job this afternoon. Reich takes a snap, and he'll drop straight back. Play action pass to Joyner. He's looking downfield. Everything to gain and almost nothing to lose. It would be like a punt if they missed the play. It was a good pass, really, but a great defensive play by Troy Hill. Now, I'll tell you one thing. If Troy doesn't make it, you can put six on the board for the Terps if that kid doesn't fall down after he caught it. All right, now it's third down and eight. Big play for Pitt here. Long count. Wright's going to put it up again. Got a man in the open in the flat. He can't hold the ball. In the near flat, he was as wide open. You'll ever see Greg Hill and Melvin Dean was coming. They had the first down of it against West Virginia last week, and they lost that game. Here's a nice pass, not to Greg Hill, catchable. It was off both his hands, the drop. Al Sadler standing back about the 15, Flynn, Tommy Flynn. Drives him over, the ball, a fair catch, called for up on the 35-yard line. He puts it on the 37, and the official will put it back on the 36. Well, it's, it's somewhere between the 36 yeah. and the 37. It's somewhere in that area. We know it's on the field, Bob. That we know. Well, two second-year coaches are battling it out. Bobby Ross has had a lot of experience with Kansas City as a coach in his second year, and, of course, Bo Spazio. Six Off minutes, to a winning start. Six minutes, 36 seconds left, Bob. All right, wind at the back of the Panthers as we have Darnell Stone and Bailey in that backfield. Two tight end offense. There they go as they block forward for Mark Bailey. Storms across the 40 up to about the 45-yard line before Eric Wilson, the interior left linebacker, comes in to make the stop. Somebody's got to pick up this Pitt Panther team, and it looks as if it may be the offensive line. The offensive line charged off that ball five yards down the field, and it looks as if they're going to keep running with the two tight end offense. Tommy Johnson is in there along with Glenn Wilson. Old time pit football. Straight ahead, into the open goes McIntyre. Oh, no, guys fumbled around. Who's got it? But Jenny says we got it. Oh. The official just said it. The official says we got it. the one that counts. That guy right there, you ought to get his whistle and put that in froggy. <laughs> That's a good whistle. Oh, he's got a dandy. Well, Pitt's having oh, trouble holding on to the football as we look got a injured, an injured Maryland player. Shaking up a little bit. He looks like he's all right. Bobby DePaul. Now, let's see what we got here, folks. It's 13 to 7 in favor of Maryland. Pitt has the ball on the Maryland 42. There's Here's the drop. McIntyre gets his one arm pulled off the ball and Number three was a man who forced the five five action. Look at Bailey Raw as he goes across the 35. Boy, that offensive line is popping Ball now. Ball stop him. Well, run off Freilich. Go right off Freilich if you're going to try to score. Junior at 290 with the two tight ends. And Rundo and company, that's the only way. If Pitt, for the Pitt fans, can keep possession of the ball, not fumble, in other words. Time is in their favor driving downfield. All right, out of the eye. Again, the handoff for the up-back McIntyre. This time, very little yarding. As Chuck Fawcett has come into the game, a freshman at linebacker to make the stop. Joe Krause, the safety, was the one who forced that fumble on McIntyre. If Pitt is intent on running the football, they ought to make sure they've got both hands on it. And it looks as if Bo just telling the Maryland defense, we're going to run it until you stop it. Well, I want to thank Stan Hurts for the first Jeff Skinner. Doug Ed Hoff for helping us with these stats and right on top of everything. Out of the eye formation for the moment. Again, it's to the up back, the fullback, and he drives forward for a couple of yards. With McIntyre. Tommy McHale. Speaking of stats, Darnell Stone today, 15 carries, 39 yards. McIntyre, before that last carry, was uh, 12 for 48. He's now 13 of 50. A big play, second down seven. There it goes, McIntyre breaks down to about the 21-yard line. 
I'll tell you, Gunner, the pit line is just blowing him off the ball at this point. Clarence Baldwin came up. That's it. All right, it's third down. Two yards to go. Out of the air. McIntyre. Looks like he might have the first down. We're now under four minutes to play. Three minutes, 53 seconds with the clock stopped because of the first down. And Pitt continues to move the football on the ground against the Maryland wide tackle six. And I made a bad call for you there, and that was Mark Bailey that had the ball. Had just come into the game replacing McIntyre. They had been shuffling him back and forth, and now McIntyre's back in the game. Brock sent it to the near sideline. Again, McIntyre finds a hole, gets to the 15-yard line, and storms his way forward for another yard before Eric Wilson can bring him down. Just plain old grind-out football in behind left tackle Bill Freilicka, Jr. at 6'5", 290 pounds. Marlon McIntyre's 15 carries, 60 yards on the day, and as you notice, the pit running backs have both hands on the football. All right, three minutes to go in the ball game, 13-7, Maryland. Straight ahead we go again with a fullback this time. And Mark Bailey, he went to about the 10. We'll wait and see where they unpile. Now, it looks as though they're sending the plays in and out pretty much with a fullback. They're spelling their fullbacks, McIntyre and Bailey, and that's how they're coming with the plays. Furman made the stop there. Third down and one, watch it. Good Jimmy. Great hand off to Bailey. He finds the hole, pushes through himself, and picks up the first down. Live oh. action, McIntyre. Push down, hit. Right over Bill Fraley, Gunner. They run, they run over his hole at least 90% of the time in this drive. There oh. goes McIntyre. Now in comes Bailey. That's what they're doing. They have switched to calling their players with their fullback, giving their fullbacks a plays rest because this drive is basically fullback, fullback, fullback. I'll tell you what they're doing, too, is they're running into that corner of the end zone where the pit cheering section is, and you can bet those guys have the players fired up. Third down and seven. A third and goal. Marker on the play. Let's wait and see what this one is. Wait and see what this one is. It's first and goal, I wanted to say, on the seven. Now, hold on a minute till we get a look at what uh, this marker's all about. Play started, first and goal on the seven. From the roar of the crowd, it's going to put the Panthers back. I think we got Watch a hold. Frayley. Watch Brady here, number 79. He takes, he takes three guys out of there like it's nothing. I wouldn't be surprised if there, if that oh, was right the here. call on Frayla, the holding call. So against he might, though. That might have got his arm hooked in there. what I mean. Fraley took the man down, and depending on where the referee saw, what well, I, I don't did they mark the penalty on? Yeah, uh, down is on the 12 yard line now, uh, just about the 12. First down, and that's McIntyre. It's just been nothing but pullback, pullback outside of that 136 yard pass and run play. Chuck Fawcett made the stop. Now the clock says a minute 42 to go. The score: Maryland 13, Pitt 7. And the ball is going to be placed on the seven-yard line of Maryland. That's the story. It was second down. And uh, really going to go. Can't get any more exciting than this. Boy, is that a fumble and away? Maryland is gone. Jemmy has it knocked loose by Chuck Fossett. And Maryland has come up with the ball after it was first and goal on the seven. Maryland leading 13 to seven with a minute and 14 to go. That's the third fumble Pitt has lost today. Watch Jemmy. He's rolling out. He's looking to pitch it, but right there. Number two. Yep. He gets the ball deflected as he's tackled at the same time. Ryan Baker, the strong safety, blitzed through there. They were trying to get him off the Darnell Stone, and bang, knocked it out of his hand. 
Fawcett recovered. So, Maryland has the ball. And an upset is in the making with a minute 14 to go. All they got to do is try to kill it, and they storm for several yards to about the 22, and the Panthers will call a timeout. And Caesar Alvesert makes the stop. Well, they're trying to strip the ball, Bob. Those big defensive linemen are just trying to grab that ball, and the answer is to hold on for Maryland. There's no question now, but if the game stays, <laughs> excuse me, this way. Then Pitt will have to storm back against the team that beat this club, West Virginia. Yeah, the West Virginia, and it'll be on local cable vision for you. And I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that will be a pad popper. But right now, this game has a minute nine to go, with the Panthers trailing Maryland. Maryland 13, Pitt 7 in the fourth quarter, a minute nine to go, with second down and six. Quite frankly, the difference in this game is mistakes and special team play. That has Maryland out in front of, at the time, and three fumbles on the Pitt Panthers. Three fumbles lost. And there you go. The, uh, I would say also one of the big stories is the inspiration. They've just had it. Maryland's been loaded up with inspiration and great desire. They've, uh, they, certainly, they certainly have, Bob, the line play and and the, the kicking team. The kicking game was the answer. You called it before the game, and that's the difference at this point. Right, heading it off now. Coming to the near sideline into the open. He almost went all the way for a touchdown. Well, he fumbled the ball. Chopper, he fumbled, and who has it? Maryland has it. Boy, what a scramble that was. As Melvin Bean tried to strip the ball from him along with Al Wendlinkowski, who really gave him a belt. Watch this replay. There's the handoff to Joyner. Wing Lukowski misses on the tackle. Joyner heads up field. He's sandwiched. He loses it. He just loses it at the end, but he managed to recover his own fumble. Joyner is 84 yards on 19 carries and coming into this game. Pitt has only given up an average of 81 yards on the ground. All right, 50 seconds and counting. Team 7 to Maryland. With the first and 10, the game is there. All they got to do is sit down on it. Long count, of course. Now he hands it off to Joyner. Joyner runs. They try to strip the ball away from him. And I must be honest with you, if I'm Maryland, I'm just going to sit out on the ball. I don't know why I even hand it off. Well, pitch is called it. I think it's last time out. No, they said according to the clock there, too. I don't know. Down to one now, Bob. Well, the biggest thing is, of course, uh, with Maryland with only 30 seconds to go, Never hand off a football. Just get it and sit down on it. Well, I think that's what he'll do on the next play. They came awful close to doing it right there. Stripping it. Well, to say the least, this has been an exciting cable cast. And again, we want to say thanks to Stan Ernst and Ed Hawk and a young man with the name of Jeff Skinner out of Potomac, Maryland. Their help has been invaluable to us. Our old buddy John Hall here who picked us up at the airport drove us over here and kind of get us back safe and sound so we can return to Pittsburgh with a team that's uh, been thoroughly played here to a standstill and then some by the Terrapins of Maryland. It just goes to show you, you can assume little or nothing in this ballgame. Frank Reich, who subbed for Boomer Esiason, who did not play this game with a sore right shoulder. Sean Benson of uh, Pitt for the home with the Dragon Rights. No, the other way around. No, I mean Sean Benson of uh, Maryland, Maryland right. was the home of the Dragon Rights. His brother Troy Benson is only 225 pounds, and Sean, 252, I would say, would have the Dragon Rights no matter what happens. <laughs> well, one, huh? one of them's in, back in Altoona, we'll have to separate the two. Well, one of them's in for a long winter. Well, mother and dad, you know, are very proud. And their brother, there goes the Maryland flag. That's uh, victorious for them. With only 20 seconds remaining, Maryland has sprung what would be called a rather major upset against the Panthers of Pitt, who are ranked very high. What was their highest ranking APUP coming out of here? Well, AP had them ninth, right behind West Virginia, who was eighth. And, of course, Pitt plays West Virginia next week, and West Virginia beat Maryland here last week. But I'm happy to see the Terrapins rebound after a difficult week, uh, really a, a week last week.